We're crossing our fingers. Otherwise, we could have a delay because there's some serious lightning bolts about 10 miles from here. There's one right at the goal line as well. Number 14, Quincy McDuffie. He's taken two kicks back in his career. He's electric on the outside. I would not be kicking the ball right to him if I was Kansas State on this opening kickoff. So McDuffie, a 93-yard return, as you mentioned already this year. And we are underway in Manhattan. A short one's going to Kevin Williams. Sander will be taken at the nine. Spun around and put down. That is dropped just shy of the 25 by Robert Rose. So UCF and their quarterback Jeff Godfrey ready to go. A true freshman from Miami. You watched him in warm-ups and you liked the way he released the ball. Uh, he, he's a short guy, but he's quick. He's elusive. And he's only going to get better as a passer. I did like the way he was throwing the football. 6A player of the year in the state of Florida last year. Some say he's almost a cult hero in South Florida. That's how much of a following this kid has. Ronnie Weaver sets up at the backfield with him. We'll set back some receivers in just a moment. Man. Can't get out of the backfield. Dropped real quickly. A.J. Guyton as they tried to run the flanker from the slot. And in defensively. It was quick for Antonio Felder, the defensive end, who had three sacks last year. Looking at the Phillips Television starting the lineup offensively. They've got Ja Reed on the right side, making his 22nd consecutive start. There's plenty of speed. You talked about McDuffie up and down the lineup for Central Florida, a school that is the third largest undergraduate enrollment in the nation at 53,000. So they've got a talent pool to draw from. Opening minute of play, and already a loss of about eight. Good arm, but behind the intended target. So Godfrey working on Stephen Harrison, the corner on that side. Showed good velocity. Now our Phillips Television starting 11. And up front, Brazell Brown, three sacks over the first three games for the underneath tackle. They go with a 4 2 5 three back experience. And then the fifth back, David Garrett, a junior from Cleveland, and a transfer from. Fort Scott Community College. The Kansas Junior Colleges have been very kind to the program here at Kansas State. One of the reasons that Bill Snyder has been so successful. So now third and long. Underneath. And it won't work. It goes to Newsom, the senior out of St. Pete. But it just gets back to the original line and maybe a yard more to the 25. We look at the keys for UCF. They've got to have explosive plays going backwards on their first series. That's not going to be very good. Got to stop the hidden yards for Daniel Thomas. He gets a lot of them. And then the depth charts, their defense, very deep. Everybody will play. They have not allowed a point in the fourth quarter because everybody gets out there. They never get tired. Klingon will put it away. The sophomore from Coral Springs. Thompson waits back deep. And setting up for the return. Thompson. Making the first one miss and does a good job just to get it out close to the 40 yard line. So, our keys brought to you by Principal Financial. That was for UCF as Hallman makes the play. It'll be first and ten in a short field. And our principal edged the game. And is it going to be Carson Kaufman? Well, you know, you Chase's see, younger brother, the former Missouri Tiger. You, you know, UCF is going to be geared up to st uh, stop Daniel Thomas. So Carson Kaufman has got to have an efficient day throwing the football for Kansas State. He's behind Wilson, the true fullback. And a little option action. Kaufman won't get a thing. Good for his suit. Laterally, it's a speed defense we talked about. In our Phillips Television starting lineup, first the offensive line. And whether it's Weiberg or Kendall, the left guard, and the starting center, two very good ones up front. So if they run a little bit top heavy left, you can understand why. Backs receivers, and the receivers they hardly get to mention because of Daniel Thomas. They'll set the 11, Central Florida. It'll be second and long, second and still almost 10. Kaufman out of the gun with heat. And because of the pressure, a very short throw. So good heat early. And, and on the speed on the outside, we talked about Bruce Miller, the exceptional defensive end, senior from Canton, Georgia. Williams, the other side, another sack master. Hallman's got the most experience among the linebackers, and, and they really like what Ishmael brings the sophomore from Miami. The coaches tell us a passionate young man, uh, just a lot of things to like about him. They couldn't say enough good things 
of a Kamal Ishmael. Now on third down, pocket collapsing, and so is Kaufman. Sack is there and put down by Darius Null, the Conference USA Defensive Player of the Week, picking up where he left off. Speed, speed, and more speed for the defensive front for UCF. You got to stay on schedule when you're in an obvious passing situation. Guys like Darius Null are going to have a mismatch on the running back, Daniel Thomas, and the pursuit to get to Carson Kaufman. That's what this defense is all about. Ryan Dorr into punt. A.J. Guyton waits back deep. It's a beauty. Pushing Guyton back to the 12. And what a move to make a miss. Flags on the play, though, unfortunately for UCF, as it goes across the 25 after the 26 put down by Andre McDonald. So let's see what the flag is about. Is it a block in the back? During the return, illegal block in the back, number 21. The 10-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. They call it Mondarin Baldwin. So a bad break for George O'Leary and his squad, but he's got to like what he saw from his speed defense. It's scoreless early as UCF gets it right back. Forecasters said it was about a 30% chance of rain. An inexact science, maybe? Well, this is... Uh, speed it up just slightly but you get an idea and we're not near a body of water so <laughs> they're out of nowhere <laughs> you knew we were in bad shape when you saw the the seagulls and as it rolled in the fans rolled out now it is blowing and raining sideways and fortunately it's uh, the field turf that has pretty good drainage so that's for down the road purposes as we will continue this football game we don't care if it's midnight tonight. We will resign. Let it rain. Yeah, this is actually going to be very good for Jeff Godfrey because he did not play well in the first series. He got a chance to calm down. Now he gets a chance to come out here, reset, and start anew. So here we go with Ronnie Weaver in the backfield. He's big back. Man, takes a pounding right back at the 15-yard line. So a crash course on return. Now we'll set things once again, offensively and defensively. That time, Brown came up big. That's Brazel Brown, the senior from Houston, a transfer from Berlin Junior College. He's a guy who's a former tight end, so he used to take the hits, and now he applied one there. Already three sacks on the season. You can tell why. Very athletic player down front for K-State. Waver stays in the backfield on second and ten. K goes in motion, their H back. Good run up the middle. Man, into the secondary. Tyson Hardman, the strong safety, had to make the hit. Otherwise, an easy first down. They're short by two after the gain of eight. You can tell why Hardman's on but mentioned all Big 12 from last season. Very athletic, and that was a sure tackle. That was the last line of defense for Kansas State. UCF creating a nice lane in the middle of that defense, but Hartman with the sure tackle. So two teams that do like to run the football, and especially Kansas State. A third and two, though, this time for the Knights of UCF. Now running for the first down. He gets it. Jeff Godfrey, he ran for two TDs in the come-from-behind effort. They lost by seven, 28-21, but they were down 28-7 at one point, and then Godfrey, with two rushing touchdowns, got him back into the Wolfpack game. That's the one thing that you worry about with a young, true freshman quarterback, Joel, is is he going to take off too early? But that time, seeing the sticks, running for the first down, that's a good decision from Jeff Godfrey. They keep Weaver in the backfield. We'll also see Jonathan Davis, Brendan Kelly, three different sorts after talking to their coordinators and George O'Leary earlier this week. And Weaver belted in the backfield. Boy, what about the penetration of Brandon Harrell, the left end? couple of sacks over the first three games and there's a tackle for a loss 17 solo tackles on the season that's the most in the country by a defensive lineman Brandon Harold very athletic missed last season had to redshirt the inside pinch going into that inside gap UCF's offensive line has got to pass that man along it's got to go from the tackle to the guard in order to get blocked but Harold does a nice job getting involved in the backfield it'll be a loss of three on its second and 13 Back at the Knights, 24. 
time for Godfrey. Guyton's got it. And Guyton stretches it across the 35. Alert play, thinking the marker was there to begin with. I like the effort. Ty Zimmerman on the coverage. It's going to be short of the first down, though, by about two on the gain of 11. Very composed throw and a great route on the outside by Guyton, forcing and stepping on the toes of the safety before breaking outside, trying to reach for that first down. I love what Godfrey did, though. He settled himself in the pocket, Joel, and really delivered a strike on the outside. Guyton over on the bench, as you can see, shake it up on the play after the hit. Coming in now, Kamar Aiken, a senior out of Hollywood, Florida. And in the slot, going to be Brian Waters. Need to. Weaver crashes his way there. But he was hit right at the line by Brown. Got through that, dropped by Felder. But you see the strength of a downhill runner like Ronnie Weaver, a former walk-on who's now on scholarship. Weaver, 209 pounds, the junior, hasn't had a ton of attempts. They're going to rotate all three backs, Davis, Kelly, and Weaver all day long, but a strong run early from Ronnie Weaver. They said he's a good vision guy. The other backs, uh, Brendan Kelly, a power back, Jonathan Davis, he's their true speed back at about 5'9", 195. First and 10 on back-to-back -back on the slant, batted down at the line of scrimmage. Big play again by Brandon Harold. Young man from East St. Louis, Illinois. Big junior on the offensive line, number 65, Cliff McC McCray. Didn't get Brandon Harold's hands down. You see, he's too passive. Harold's able to watch the eyes and see the release of Godfrey and then go up and bat that ball down. Very athletic play on the outside for Harold. Second and ten. McDuffie into the ball game now. Weaver laying over to the left side. Boy, he makes the most of it. He finds out the crease, hits it to the 45, give him the 47, a gain of six on the carry. A manageable third down now as Terrell put him down. Cadero Terrell made the stop. This is going to be one of those rugged, hard-nosed football games. Both teams want to establish the run, and both defenses are very physical, sound defenses, and we're seeing that play out, play out so far early in this football game. It'll be third and four. Need to take it inside the 49 of K-State. See if they try to get on a wide side. A little option action over to the rollout for Godfrey. And running into his own man. Otherwise, he's got the first down. Uh, he ran right into his offensive lineman. Otherwise, if Pichelle is not there, he had a nice lane over to the right side. Did have a nice lane. Sometimes you're just too eager to make a play as a young player at quarterback. I don't mind him running the football as he is very athletic but George O'Leary is going to want to see Jeff Godfrey settle in the pocket and deliver the football down the football field. Klingon will punt it away. It'll be Tremaine Thomas. Thompson rather from Jenks, Oklahoma. Calling for the fair catch and with a wet one he takes it in cleanly. Back at the 12 so K-State gets it for the second time. But after an hour and 18 minute delay we'll see how they handle the adjustment. Down to the sideline. Well, Daniel Thomas, he is the leader among all running backs in the nation, second best overall in the nation. You see what he's done over his first three. It was 181 yards against Iowa State. They came on a career high 34 carries. He's a workhorse, and he's going to need to be that again today for K State. Aubrey Quarles, the motion man, and Thomas belted straight up the middle. It was Josh Lynham. Who got to him first, the junior from Tavares, Florida. Also, David Williams on top of the play. Flag down right at the point of the stop. In the Kansas State Keys today, you got to get downhill in the running attack. This is a fast defense. You got to go straight north and south on them. And the Kaufman effect. How effective is Carson, Carson Kaufman going to be through the air? You got to take the down count after the play. Personal foul, late hit, number 59. Half the distance to the goal. Second down. Zach Kendall, left guard. How effective and efficient can Carson Kaufman be in the passing game? And the, the last one contained Go Godfrey. Uh, Jeff Godfrey, the true freshman for UCF. Very athletic kid at quarterback. you got to make sure you stay in your rush, rush lanes and don't allow him to make big explosive plays on the edge. Well, they take it half the distance to the goal. It was a dead ball foul after the play was over. So now it's going to be second and long back at the six. Son! Kaufman and Thomas ball security real important here to say the least they put down Daniel Thomas gang tackling Ishmael came up from the secondary the safety the sophomore from Miami and 
We talked about Bruce Miller at the top of the telecast. Our principal financial group edge to the game a huge factor. Conference USA Defensive Player of the Year a year ago and uh, as well in this preseason this year. We've already seen the effect in the first third down of the game getting to Carson Kaufman forcing him off the throw spot. He's going to have to have a big day especially in situations like this third and long. Little shovel action Daniel Thomas and it's read perfectly. Outstanding effort Chance Henderson the senior from Conyers Georgia. He stayed at home didn't he. Absolutely did read the alley. Extremely well from his backside linebacker position. Clearly, the offside guard did not get up to Henderson on the second level. Scrape across, fill the alley, make the tackle. That's a great defensive play from Chance Henderson. Door putting from his own goal line. It'll be A.J. Guyton shaking up and back in. They're calling for the fair catch. And he's got it running into his own man. And he gets it cleanly at the 50. Great concentration. Newsom <laughs> running into Guyton. And when we come back, we're going to join Rick Renner in our college football Saturday studio for an Academy Sports and Outdoors game break as we're scoreless so far in Manhattan. Ball better than our guy here for Kansas State, Daniel Thomas. So it just gives you an idea how good Denard Robinson has been playing. Great field position to start the third drive of the game for the Knights. They've got it at the midfield strike. Weaver tripped up at the line, falling forward for about three, almost four down low again. Brandon Harold in on the play. Well, UCF comes in with wins over South Dakota and Buffalo. That was last week on the road. Only lost so far as they're two and one. It came to North Carolina State by seven, and that game's all they beat themselves. They turned it over five times. Turned it over. Godfrey didn't play until the second half, but brought him back in the fourth quarter. Ended up losing the game in the last minute. Fumbled on the 10 yard line, 28 21. It'll be second and inside of seven. K State territory for the first time. Godfrey, design quarterback draw, nifty one, slides across. He's got the first down to the 39. Well, it didn't take long for this young man to bolt. <laughs> very, very explosive, very fast. I love the designed run. Take the decision out of his hands. Let him get going right up the middle of the field, try to make a play. Finds the sticks, gets down onto the ground. You can see why he's so dangerous with his feet. Kansas State very worried about that. Bill Snyder said we can't allow this kid to get loose on the outside. Talented young man has Ronnie Weaver in the backfield. First and ten from the Wildcats 40. It's Weaver cutting it back beautifully, breaking tackles into the secondary, and he spins for 16 and make it 14. All the way down to the 26. Dropped by Stephen Harrison. K-State dials up a blitz. They don't blitz off, they dial up a blitz. And they're actually gonna run themselves right out of this play. All the way through the B gap, you see the linebacker on the outside. He runs himself out of the play. That's a great block right there. Weaver's able to cut it up, get north and south, move the chains once again. They're already in field goal territory. Nick Katoy. Gadget and Stanage Weaver into the secondary again and close to a first and goal. He's between the 11 and the 10. So now Central Florida running at will. Tyson Hartman dropping the running back, but Ronnie Weaver out of Vero Beach, the former walk on doing the damage. Ja Reed, the big tackle, number 76, and his buddies up front getting the job done. That's a big offensive front. 316, 326, 313, all of them up front. Very big, very physical. Well, what an advantage when you get it in midfield and you don't have to put the ball up and all ready. Three snaps later, you're down to the 11. It'll be Weaver. Be your own blocker. He was. He ran his offensive lineman right out of the play. Cliff McCray, the junior from Miami, up his back. Lamore was the one at the bottom of the pile. Man, the first and ten line, we remind you, is brought to you by Phillips Television. So a very impressive third drive of the game. A scoreless affair so far for UCF. Godfrey getting the play call. Plenty of time on the clock, though, for him. They're looking at second, a little less than seven. Pick up the first down inside the one. Weaver again. Pulled the guard. Outside he goes. Touchdowns. UCF. Nice little convoy riding the hip. And it was an outstanding block by Forgetti. 
Jordan Ray A.J. Guyton on the outside Jordan Ray pulls from his center position. They do a great day the job the convoy outside getting Weaver into the end zone. Chuck Katoy in for the point after. Man, what an impressive drive. Took the pressure off Godfrey. He helped himself, though. Don't forget about the quarterback draw on second and long and picking up the first down. Always staying on schedule. Always able to run the football just out of the pistol. They're going to hand it to Weaver. And on the outside, you see Kamar Aiken, number 81, getting the job done. A.J. Guyton, number three, also had a great block. But Weaver lowering his pads at the goal line exactly what you want to do with the football as a ball carrier take it to the defense don't allow them to stand you up at the one yard line what terrific run from Ronnie Weaver the junior and actually it was it was Ray out there the sophomore for Western Florida for George O'Leary's squad you can see inside of three minutes six snaps that's all it took great field position as the personal foul put K State off schedule and now K State's got quarrels waiting back along with William Powell. He's at the goal line. The Big 12 special teams player of the week for Bill Snyder last week. He had one for 45, four returns. He averages 31 a try this year. Man, good hang time on this one. Powell, two yards in, will bring it out. Weaves his way past the 20, makes a move to the 30. That's just good vision. Because that ball hung up. Not a bad kick two yards into the end zone. End zone. Josh Robinson bringing him down for the Knights. It's exactly what you want to do with the kick. A high kick into the corner, just into the end zone, forcing Powell to bring it up. But you said it, the vision from Powell to find the hole, even towards the boundary, cuts to the short side of the field, tries to get back across towards the middle. That's finally when he's brought down. They needed this because they had just lost the field position battle through those last set of series. They've got it to the 28, and they're still, Joel, don't forget, looking for the first first down of the game. Six already for UCF. Two and a half to play in the opening 15. Good pursuit. Daniel Thomas spun down and put down. And it was E.J. Dunstan who chased him from the near side of the far side. And he is 18. He's a true freshman true out of Eatonville, Florida. 300 pounds, big guy, Victor Gary. Gray, excuse me, number 91. Inside, both Dunstan and Gray are freshmen. Kansas State thought they could exploit them in the middle of the offensive uh, front there, but they haven't been able to do that so far. It'll be second and seven after the gain of three. Hoffman has it punched back, and that was once again Victor Gray, who you were just talking about. We talked so much about Miller and Williams, the ends, and also Darius Nall, that the inexperienced ones in the middle were the question marks, Gray and Dunstan, but they're holding up well early. I believe this was a twist because Gray all the way to your left side. And he gets his hands up. That's just a poor job of the offensive line, not establishing the pocket on the inside. It'll be third and seven. Still looking for their first first down on their third series of the game. Kaufman in trouble, loses the football, and loses yardage. Boy, we we'll talk about him. Bruce Miller, Conference USA Defensive Player of the Year, and Kaufman could have been hurt on a very vulnerable position that he was put in. Good pressure. Not a very vocal leader, Bruce Miller, but a relentless football player. Gets after the quarterback. You can see why this guy is the active leader in sacks and tackles for loss. Always in the backfield. Guyton waiting for the door punt. A wobbler and a short one. A returnable type for A.J. Guyton. He's got a little lane over to the left side. Breaks it. Past the midfield strike. And he's got another first down in plus territory all the way to the 43 forced out by Braden Wilson the fullback but again a very short field for UCF very short field they told us that all three running backs would play but the hot guy would get the carries that's Ronnie Weaver from the last series eating up yardage getting north and south division scanning the backside finding the holes and Weaver all the way into the end zone that was an easy series on the last series to start from about the 50 yard line now they're on the plus side at the 43 ready to get back into business for the Knights. Jonathan Davis takes over in the backfield a sophomore from Lawrenceville Georgia. Design roll. And on the deflection it falls incomplete. It was tipped on its way. The pressure came from Harold. Tipped by David Garrett though the D back the nickel back. Brendan Harold freshman All-American a couple of years ago. 
didn't play last year because of an injury but 91 Brandon Harold has already been in the backfield causing havoc on Jeff Godfrey a number of times the only problem is they haven't been able to hold up and run defense I expect UCF to get right back to that running game right here Davis once again the single looking one way going the other way a little bubble screen for Guyton. And it works effectively for close to eight down to the 35 brought down by Reback, the linebacker junior from St. Louis. We've seen a little bit of everything early the power game now featuring Godfrey a little bit more on this series. He can definitely throw the football. However you don't want to stray too far from what made you successful on that first series. Right back in there Jonathan Davis is going to line up behind Jeff Godfrey now third and two big chance for K-State need to take it inside the 33 option and reading it well as Godfrey he's into the secondary and he's got a first down easily down to the 30 how quick does he look <laughs> very quick and he runs the option so well as soon as he gets the football into his hands he turns and squares his shoulders to the pitch man and he attacks the outside shoulder of the pitch man as soon as he sees him goes up to the pitch he cuts up and gets north and south he runs what we used to call hash number sidelines in the option he runs the alley moves the chains for UCF they list him at 5'11 175 for George O'Leary so he's basically an extra tailback who can throw the football give it to Davis just hammering it slugging it inside down to the 29 again only a yard but already well within range for Katoy. And that is going to be the final snap of a very productive start today after an hour and 18 minute delay for the Knights of UCF from Conference USA. So the undefeated K State Wildcats still looking for their first first down of the game at the end of the first quarter. You're watching Big 12 College Football Saturday. It's all presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. 7 0 the Knights of UCF. Pocket holds up well. He's got a ton of time and throws the pick. He had the man underneath open. It's intercepted by Lemur. Boy, he had a wide open receiver and he read the deep one, not the short one. I believe that was Brian Waters out there running the corner route. The corner route or the deep out route, Joel, has got to be thrown on time and to the outside. Godfrey takes too long in the pocket and he delays his throw. That hesitation causes the football right there. This is too long. This this ball has got to be thrown right away out of the break and to the outside allowing the safety to get underneath that Emmanuel Lemur is able to step in. That's an easy interception for a safety if he's in position which Lemur was that's a mistake from the true freshman Jeff Godfrey. First career interception for Lemur as Thomas tries to find some daylight he's belted by the safety Ishmael came up and now the gang tackle. To stand him up after a gain of two and a half, three yards at the most. So the turnover by the quarterback takes off most likely three because they were inside the 30. And they're an unbelievable team this year when they get inside the red zone. Their percentage rate, one of the highest in the nation. But the turnover as Quarles comes over to the near side, bottom of your screen, along with Thompson. It'll be second and long. It'll check off the line by Carson Kaufman. And checks to a pass short of the first down. The grab is made by Broderick Smith, the sophomore from Garden City, Kansas, in front of Jamel Ishmael. That was a great check from Carson Kaufman. He saw Kamal Ishmael come up from his weak side safety position and insert himself into the box, into the run box. That means that the outside, you've got one-on-one -on -one coverage with free access is what I've called. Take the easy hitch, get yourself four or five yards. Side formation. Only need a yard on third down. Run the option. And Kaufman will get it easily. So he holds on to himself. And, and I liked it when we talked to him as Ishmael makes the stop. Carson Kaufman, we said, only 12 passes last week. Uh, he goes, well, actually only six were called. I checked off and six more were mine. And, and this, with a big smile. That's right, with a huge smile. This is the aspect of his game, that speed option. Took Iowa State last week by surprise. It was very effective for them trying to get something going on the ground because UCF is keying on number eight, Daniel Thomas, not allowing him to get going. 
So K State with their first first down of the game. It took 17 minutes into the contest. Now can they get Daniel Thomas off? They'll use him on a play fake. It's Wilson, the fullback. He takes a shot for good yardage on first down. So there's the safety now. After looking downfield, and Henderson applied the hit. But Kaufman on the read. Kaufman was looking for Tannehill down the field. That's what we wanted on the corner route, the big play action pass to the tight end. Very astutely dumps it off to Braden Wilson, though, and now they're in second and short. Second and short off the check down for Bill Snyder. It'll be Daniel Thomas. And again, he is rocked right at the line by Dunstan. A true freshman in only his fourth career game. And a big time play. We talked with Wade Wybert and Zach Kendall on the inside of that offensive line for K-State yesterday, and they said, you know, we think we can take advantage of the freshman defensive tackles and nose guards, Gray and Dunstan on the inside for UCF. They have not been able to do that. Gray and Dunstan are plugging things up and allowing the linebackers to actually scrape and make plays, and they're making plays themselves. K-State needs a timeout. They're confused. William Powell came running onto the field very late after they broke the huddle, and... Carson Kaufman very alertly said, wait a minute, we're not all together on the same page. So first time out of the first half, it's used by Bill Snyder and K-State. And trying to convert on their first third down of the game. Over three so far for Carson Kaufman looking over. A little check off of the line. Nine guys in the box defending the run for UCF. Thomas needs two, and he's got it. He's got about five sets in past the 45. Across the 46, dropped by Gray. This is a great example of the hidden yards that Daniel Thomas is able to gain. He gets hit close to or a yard short of the first down marker, and yet four to five yards later is when he is actually brought down to the ground. A good, explosive, physical run from Daniel Thomas. Wilson sets up and goes in motion. It'll be first down on a play fake. Now the deep ball up for grabs and intercepted. Picked off. Josh Robinson going the other way. Or check that. It's the safety Weems instead. A flag on the play. And Daniel Thomas will get him. But a flag back as it was overthrown by Carson Kaufman into coverage. And almost like a cover, too. The safety was playing at home. Ill-advised throw from Carson Kaufman off of his back foot into coverage. Tannehill was absolutely blanketed on the outside. During the return, illegal block in the back. Number 91, the 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul at the first down. Call it on Gray. Weems, that's just an easy center field play, right? That ball was thrown up for the grabs in the outside. Carson Kaufman never able to set his feet. That's a ball that needs to get thrown away. You just got a first down. It's only your second of the game for Kansas State. You cannot turn the football over if you're Kansas State you're not built to come back you only want to throw the football between 12 and 15 times ill-advised throw Tannehill covered very well in the back end by Justin Body, senior from Atlanta it'll be first and 10 off the turnover at the 35 UCF They've got Davis in the backfield and now going for the bundle throwing it down for Aiken and incomplete Good coverage on the play. Steven Harrison over there. K-State. This is a guy that they need to get going, Kamar Aiken. Very strong wide receiver. You think of UCF wide receivers, you would think of Brandon Marshall. Well, this guy, 6'2", 218 pounds, has beaten every single one of Brandon Marshall's weight room records at UCF. This ball just too far on the outside. Jeff Godfrey's got to keep his eyes down on the target when he lets go of that football to throw more accurately down the football field. Also a little mix up at the backfield as he ran into his tailback. And now uses his tailback effectively and gets the first down. Tripped up by Ty Zimmerman, but he's got 11. And we talked about the wheels of Jeff Godfrey. What a weapon. And what a great read on this own replay. Right. Brendan Harold comes crashing down. He's almost in no man's land. You're going to see him come into the screen and get completely turned around by the speed of Jeff Godfrey, and he runs all the way for the chains. Joe, I love what he does as a quarterback. As soon as he passes the line of scrimmage, it's north and south positive yards the whole way. He's got another first down for UCF with Davis in the backfield. Calls for Guyton in motion and gives it off to A.J. Guyton. 
You know, run out of bounds. Could have been about six yard loss. Instead, just four. Breaking that tackle, Lamour forcing him out. So it's going to be second and 14 on the gadget that didn't work. It's interesting. Ronnie Weaver averaged better than six a carry. First 10 carries of the game for Weaver, 63 yards, but has been Davis ever since. Yeah, sometimes coaching staffs fall in love with their game plans. They want to see the entire game plan rather than sticking with something that has worked early. The hot back has got a rhythm. Now second and long. Davis back to the original line. Not quite. Got three. Wrapped up by Harold. So UCF facing a team from the Sunflower State for only the second time ever. And it's the first ever matchup with Kansas State. They were back in Kansas back in 1986, even before Bill Snyder got to Kansas State. George O'Leary now in his seventh season. Conference USA champs in 2007. So five minutes gone by, and the second 15 minutes of play, and a big third down. Field position wise, especially. Godfrey has it batted down. The linebacker timed it well. And make it Terrell, Cadero Terrell, the junior, who missed all of last season with an injury. He read the quarterback, didn't get the pressure, dropped a little bit. You see that more and more from front four that don't get into the backfield. Drop off, try to get their hands up, but the pressure was applied by Brandon Harrell. Godfrey had to throw that football before he wanted to. That allows the defensive line to get their hands up. Tremaine Thompson, freshman from Jens, Oklahoma, waiting for the Klingon punt. Got a good one at that, a beauty. Good hang time, he'll take it at the six. Reversing his field effectively. Did a good job just to get it across the 10, out to pass the 12. And a drop by K, the H-back. So Kansas State struggling offensively, gets it back. No damage off the turnover and the interception given up. 9.15 left in the half. We'll come right back to Wet and at Kansas. Coming off a pick, what's the game plan? Daniel Thomas and more Daniel Thomas. Will they rein it in a little bit? Pardon the expression on a cloudy day in Manhattan. Now the game as Weems puts him down about six for Daniel Thomas, but will they go a little conservative now, Joel Klatt, after the pick? I'm sure that they will. Bill Snyder told us that he was not happy the last couple of weeks with how his offense played, wants to find them a better rhythm, knows that they need to throw the ball better, but he also knows that Daniel Thomas is his best weapon. Out of the Knights loaded up even a little bit more in the box. Thomas, little reverse action. Roderick Smith. Runs out of bounds across the 20. He'll be short of the first down to the 23. Oh. Man, they're giving him the first down, but it looked like the, now they put the ball down, just nose it across the 23. That was very close to a measurement needed. Very, it was very close. What, Reggie Weems stayed home beautifully from his safety position. He's the UCF player chasing. But a good run on the outside, Broderick Smith at least getting that football up to and past the chains ultimately for another first down for K-State. Challenge flag on the spot. First and 10 from the 23. Now Wilson on the checkoff. And is it going to be a delay a game on K-State, I believe? Delay Indecision. Game. Offense number 14. The five-yard penalty, it remains first down. Carson Kaufman confused his offense. He checked to a play that he was not supposed to check to on this particular formation. They were in a weak set as far as your backfield goes, Joel, with the, with the tight end offset towards the, the weak side, and he was trying to get him over to the strong side and run sort of a boss play in terms of getting your fullback up on the middle linebacker, but the fullback, you can tell, knew he was in the wrong position, ends up with a delay game. Braden Wilson tried to switch late, and then you can see the question mark on his body language. Take it one way, dump the screen the other way, and easy play. Ishmael coming up. Did not fool UCF. The strength of this team is on the field right now, and that's the defense of the Knights. 
And Kamal Ishmael is the one that they gushed and gushed about. You know, as far as the coaches talking about these players, Kamal Ishmael, they defined him as a human missile. He comes up from his safety spot, and great safeties throw their body into the tackle because usually they're undersized against a guy like Thomas. Ishmael did that on the last play. So instead of first and 15, now second and even longer. Design move and a little shovel out as the completion for a short game to Tremaine Thompson, the redshirt freshman. It'll take it across the 20 to the 22, bringing up a third and 11 as he's forced out by Derek Hallman. So an exceptional start for the Knights defensively, and they've also controlled the field. Uh, they've kept Kansas State deep in their own territory. It's so hard to move the football with the running offense when you constantly have to go 85 yards. It'll be third and 11 to 22. Kaufman has the pocket really hold up well. Now goes deep, wide open, and just out of the reach of Broderick Smith. It was timed well. They want a flag by Josh Robinson. The ball was sailing right over the hands of Smith as Robinson tried to punch it away. Robinson last year, a freshman All-American, terrific cover guy, their best cover guy in the back end. Going to see him going down the field with Broderick Smith and did time it very well. That's too close to call if I'm a back official looking for pass interference. That's terrific coverage from Josh Robinson. Door with the punt. Guyton waits and a good one. He backpedals to the 25. So UCF gets it back up by seven, deep in their own territory after the good punt. Well, all season long, champion apparel will be showcasing the history and traditions of the Big 12 Conference tonight. We have that's 43 yards over K-State's first five offensive series. Not too shabby. Godfrey's slow start passing the football. He'll run it, which he's done effectively and does it again. He's only three of nine with a pick passing the football. And they had not asked much of Jeff Godfrey throwing the football over the first three. It hit 68% of his passes going 28 of 41. But that wasn't the way they featured him. Well, this is how you feature him, a guy with this type of ability with his feet. And this will open up the outside and create easier throws for him as they continue to pound away and gain yards in the middle of this defense. He's got Ronnie Weaver, their successful back early in the game, returning now. Only needs two for the first down. Weaver, outside he goes after slipping between his tackle and guard at a gain of eight. He's across the 40 to the 42 yard line. So here's a true freshman quarterback, an 18 year old right out of high school in Miami. And he does not look intimidated on the road at all. Not many in the country. Pete Thomas at Colorado State, he's had a rocky start. Jake Heaps, the very highly touted quarterback for BYU. You know, only a few guys get to trot out there as an 18 year old, a true freshman. I think Godfrey is probably the best of the bunch, at least so far this year. Yeah. Maybe the best athlete overall? Yeah, probably. You're exactly right. It'll be first and ten. It's Weaver as they stretch it. And Weaver, alert play. He was landing on one of his own. So he just tried to get another yard or two out of it. He's down to the 45. Short gain by his standards today. He's been that effective on the ground. He's hit by Garrett. First and ten line is brought to you by Phillips Televisions. Final five minutes of the half. Central Florida and I talked about their success in the red zone. So if they get it inside the 20 and they've done it 11 times this year, including today, they're 10 of 11 on touchdowns. Spread the defense. Do they ever? Set up five wide receivers. Godfrey. His call. He's got another first down. Boy, how do you defense? An extra tailback who can also throw the football as he takes it to the 45, tripped up by Reback. Way too wide as far as the linebackers go. They didn't have anybody in the box. Great designed run, spread everybody out. And this is the deal is that Kansas State wanted to keep two safeties back. If you do that, Joel, the linebackers have got to spread way too far apart, and it's an easy lane for Godfrey. You wouldn't have known two hours ago it was a monsoon at this ballpark. <laughs> it was dark. Look like twisters in the neighborhood. The sun is out and the Knights are rolling. Now on the option, plenty of options for Godfrey. Breaks the tackle and down to the 25, barely tripped up by Ty Zimmerman. The strong safety of the junior from Wichita saves a touchdown. Attacking the perimeter of the defense. This is where you want to attack the, the defensive end or the quarterback man after the fake. 
The defensive end gets all the way sucked in. They're going to try to arc block. He goes up to the second level. At this point, once you see that lane, the quarterback, you take off, get north and south. Ty Zimmerman, the true freshman from Kansas State, shoestring tackle, saves a touchdown. Looked like Air Force last week to you? A little bit, absolutely. First down for the 25. We get the Air Force Oklahoma game. And how precise was Air Force with their option? Brewer, flag on the play. Squeezes out two, maybe three to the 22. Wrapped up by Slaughter. Blake Slaughter, sophomore from Missouri City, Texas. Illegal formation on the offense. Five players in the backfield. It's a five yard penalty, and we'll repeat Is that all? first down. So, first down all over again. It'll be first and 15. You can see the expressions over on the sideline. George O'Leary. So many guys up on the line of scrimmage. I think they're saying that this guy was too close to the line of scrimmage out on the slot. Calls it an illegal formation. Weaver stays there with Godfrey. Now let's see if, how they adjust. Slightly off schedule. Not by much though, but they've got three downs. And a timeout is called from the bench. That came from George O'Leary and his staff. So we Time will out. do the same UCF. in Manhattan, yeah. Kansas. It's up to the defense now, K State, to try to figure things out. And it's been difficult with Godfrey on top of his game. They're going to have to insert a safety into the box. Weaver in the backfield. Bubble screen. Guyton's drilled. Getting him and getting him early, Terrence Sweeney, the senior from Houston. So a little chip. On the bubble didn't work. This is always dangerous because you're asking a wide receiver to block in space. That's the toughest block to make if you're AJ Guyton or anybody else on the outside. Guyton is going to be asked to step back and receive this football and try to find the lane. The only problem is you've got to get those guys on the ground. That's a very tough block. There's a breakdown for the man on the wide side of the field. Never touch swing. So on the loss, back to the 34, basically out of field goal range. Over the middle and too tall, trying to get it to Aiken. And he's a big guy at about 6'2", 220. Harrison on the coverage, just sailed once again, and Godfrey knows it was available. Aiken was wide open. He runs a great route. He stems to the outside shoulder and then breaks it back to the inside. But Godfrey oversteps. You see how wide his feet were when he threw that football. When you throw the football with that wide of feet, Joel, you have a tendency to leave your arm up and not finish the throw. That's why the ball sailed high on Godfrey. Yeah, it was high, as you mentioned, and also, as it turned out, behind Aiken. A very difficult proposition. Can they get some yardage for a field goal attempt? No. Now they're out of field goal territory with the false start. False start on the offense. Number 66. It's a five-yard penalty. It'll remain third down. Leggins on the outside, number 66. He's a senior. He played last year. However, Chris Martin, a redshirt freshman, had beat him out. And that's why Leggins is actually playing in this ball game. A little early start. That's what happens. The crowd gets going. It's third and long. And you get a little bit nervous and twitchy as, a, as an offensive tackle. You want to set up when Brandon Harold is going to rush on your outside. Need about eight, nine yards for a field goal try. So the fourth mark off against UCF. Now Godfrey. Can he get the yardage for a field goal try? Yes, he will. He is dumped by Sweeney coming up the corner. But he gets it down to the 25 for a fourth and 10. That was, should bring on Nick Gatoy. It was two of three so far this year. And we'll see with the placement. I know George O'Leary is not going to be happy with the fact that he's got to kick a field goal. However, this is why you have Jeff Godfrey in the ball game. He takes a bad play, makes a positive, and puts you within field goal range. Now the young man has good range. Last year hit five of seven. 40 or more. This is going to be a 42 yard attempt. It would be as long as so far this season. Clean exchange on its way and he pushed it. He left it out to the right. So they missed the opportunity for three more. Not even three yards of carry. For a guy averaging 184 a game. Thomas again. Pursuit and on his back. It's the big guy, Victor Gray. At 6'4, 260, he could run. They're having a heck of a time with these young defensive tackles for UCF. Victor Gray 
in the middle of that line. He's going to get loose, but you could also give a credit and an assist to Bruce Miller, who's getting double teamed on the outside, holding his gap, gap responsibility. That's a terrific job of not only winning the line of scrimmage, but winning the heel line, Joel, forcing that play to get stretched out so a guy like Gray can pursue from the inside and make the tackle. Most likely the last play of the half coming up, if anything, though. UCF should be up by more than seven. If that's the way it goes to the locker room, and it will. Thomas wrapped up right at the line. And will they stop the clock and make them punt it? You can't run the football against that. It's in actually impossible to run if defensive tackles are doing that to your guards and centers. Guyton waits for the punt. Gray is not a surprise to the staff, though. He had a huge game against North Carolina State, a couple of stops behind the line. He knocked down two pass attempts, so he was a presence against the Wolfpack. They go after the punt. The wobbler away from Guyton, and that will do it. If anything, UCF feels like they go to the locker room, they should be up by more than seven. And Kansas State is very fortunate. It is only a one.